Hello everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. Thanks for joining us uh, here and we've got a question from a fellow boater, uh, Marcus. Uh, Marcus has a, a powerboat, a Fleming 53. And uh, Marcus says, uh, Jeff, uh, this is a new to me boat and a little bit of context. So he was, Marcus was connected to shore power and he was making coffee and I forgot I had a eater on in the front stateroom same side of the boat, meaning there's probably obviously same circuit. I thought I blew a fuse at the outlet, but when I looked at the panel, it was the inverter charger, the Magnum 2812 that had blown. I switched it back and everything was okay. Why is the inverter on when I'm on shore power? Oh, Marcus, do you have any idea how excited I am to answer this question today? God, I love this. So why exactly? It's like magic, right? Why would an inverter charger blow a fuse when you're connected to shore power? First rule, and when in doubt, always look at rule number one on a boat. Nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. Always in doubt, always go to back to rule number one. All right, so why is nothing easy? Well, first of all, an inverter charger is actually a pretty complicated and slick device. It offers a lot of features, and one of those features is this concept called pass-through. So on our boats, uh, in the past, and I've seen this with inverter chargers that were installed 15, 20, 25 years ago, I've seen uh, boats with actually source electric switch. Do you want to boat, run the boat off inverter? Do you want to run the boat offshore or generator? I've actually seen those source electric switches with inverter, shore, or generator, and they could be Inverter, shore one, shore two, and um, generator. Now the advantage of pass-through is that the inverter, even when you have the inverter enabled or disabled, there's this concept that when you're connected to shore power, the inverter will sense AC coming in and will actually send AC out. So, and by the way, it's not just letting through whatever. Um, it actually will actually make, give you alarms. It's actually going to say, oh, you know what? This is good AC, good frequency, good voltage, or you might even alarm if it's bad. But in any effect, it's going to take AC and let it through. And that's called pass through. So AC input, AC output. The breaker on the panel on your Fleming, and again, I'm going from conjecture here because we've seen a few boats. And thank you everyone for inviting me on your boats because it is, was my dream when I was a kid of actually doing what I'm doing right now. That inverter charger breaker is actually the AC input to your inverter. And that AC input does more than just the inverter. It also will power the AC loads that can be powered either through shore power or whatever energizes your panel. And your panel is probably energized by multiple sources right now. Probably, you know, shore on one end, generator on the end, source selector, goes to the panel, and then you have what's a section on the panel that's called the non-inverted side. So those are loads that can only ever, ever be run from shore or generator. There's a breaker on your panel, the inverter charger breaker that you're talking about. That inverter charger breaker is fed from the output of either shore or generator. You turn it on, then you send power to the inverter. If the inverter's off, in your case, the inverter gets the AC, sends the AC out, and, and energizes a bunch of outlets. The things that most of us are going to want to have powered from the inverter, which are the AC outlets. So it could be your microwave, it could be the AC outlets in your galley, it could be the AC outlets on your head, it could be the AC outlets in your entertainment center. Now, when you're connected to shore power, what happens is the following, is if you're drawing more than 30 amps on all of those outlets, the 30 amp shore power feed that is powered by that circuit breaker, if it exceeds 30 amp, which is making coffee and a heater, that breaker will trip even though you weren't using the inverter and even though the inverter wasn't on. And that's normal because what happens is the inverter charger, because of pass-through, offers automatic switching. Meaning, even if you had your inverter on on your boat and you were connected to shore power, the inverter wouldn't turn itself on. It would say, I know you want me to invert, but why would I invert when I have an AC input that is energized and has good AC? What you mean to say, and this is a conditional uh, sort of state, is yes, I know you've asked me to turn myself on as an inverter, but actually, if I sense AC input, I'm not going to do that. Regardless of you asking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in a mode called standby, meaning 
I'm waiting to lose AC, and the moment you, I lose AC, I'm gonna catch it so quickly that your TV won't even flicker. And that is something that inverters do nowadays. So it allows you to transfer from shore, generator, and to not have the TV even flicker. And that's called pass-through and standby. And that's why, Marcus, your inverter charger breaker tripped because you were overloading the circuit, which by the way, it's not a big deal, happens to a lot of us. And it happened on your inverter charger, but your inverter charger does more than just inverter loads, it does pass-through loads. And that automatic switching is what causes the problem that you saw. And there's really, I mean, sure there's workarounds, but it's just now that you know that that's like that, there's nothing wrong with your system. And I've done thousands of boats just like the boat you have right now. And it's, your boat is exactly the way my boat is wired as well. Nothing wrong with it. It's just the way it is. So thanks for asking. I'm really happy that I got a chance to explain that. For all of you that are watching, if you've got further questions, post them down below. I've got further questions on inverter chargers. Guess what? I've, we've, we have presentations, hour long presentations, just on inverter chargers. And I don't just mean one, I mean multiple. There's probably over 10, 20, I don't know, 30 hours of content just on inverter chargers, because yes, I think they're pretty cool devices. And we also have articles, um, Boating Tech Talk, Ask PYS, all that is on our website, all free, all available to help you, the boater, get more out of your boat. So thanks for watching and joining us today. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.